Welcome. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about operations, production, and milestones. In particular, what we're going to be describing is how the operations and the operating plan actually is brought together. What we'll do in a minute is dive more deeply into exactly what we mean by operations and what you should be describing. But the general idea here is that you want to be able to have the reader, and by the way, yourself, as you're thinking through this, have a visual picture as you read or as you think about this and as you put this operating plan together of what the business is actually like. What's happening on a day-to-day -day basis? When people come to work, what are they doing? How many people are there? What kinds of, where do they sit? How, how big of a location do you have? All of those things. Who is the suppliers that show up? What do they do? How do you handle those situations? When the customers come in or if they do visit, what is it that they're experiencing? You want to be able to describe in a good detail what all that looks like so the reader or the listener can have a picture in their mind of your operation and begin to become comfortable that indeed you have a plan and you know what you're doing. So let's dive a little more deeply into the notion of the operating plan. If it's manufacturing operations, you want to describe how you're going to be putting that plan together. How will you deliver your product? Will you be having an outside manufacturer make, make it? Will they make parts of it and you do final assembly? Who is it that you will have? Where will they be located? How will they deliver the product to you or to the customer? How does that actual, all of that, that production occur? If it's a restaurant, how do you get, who are your suppliers? Where do they deliver the materials? How often do they deliver? When you, what's in your kitchen? How do you prepare the food? Are you, are you heating up food that's previously prepared? Are you preparing everything from scratch? What is the process of operations? When a customer walks in the door, what is the experience they have? Depends a lot on your company and what your company is like, but those are the kinds of things that you're trying to address or describe so that the reader can visualize that this is a going business and they can think about what you're doing and they can make assessments as to whether or not it makes sense from an efficiency and effective, effectiveness and a customer satisfaction perspective and whether it makes sense that you're going to be able to make a profit from this. On the research and development side, if you don't have a product yet, when none of you really will probably, um, you need to talk about how that product will be developed. What is the schedule for that? What activities in your company are going to be looking at designing, developing, prototyping, uh, uh, coming up with ideas and features and functions, doing market tests on the various elements of the product? How will all that happen? What's your schedule? What's your timeline for this? You always have to also make sure that it's clear how you'll handle your customer support. It's not just that you sell something. There's after sales support. You want customers to be satisfied and loyal. You want them to come back. How is it that you handle this customer satisfaction, customer quality, customer support, technical support, after sales service? How will that process work? How will it feel to the customer? How many people do you have in all of these various roles? So here you also talk about some of the employees and what those employees might be doing. In sum, you want your operating plan to give people a picture of what the day-to-day -day business is like in your organization. You also want to have, perhaps it doesn't have to be in the same section, sometimes it's later in the business plan, a story about what your key milestones are. Now we're going to have an entire module on milestones, so this is only a bit of an overview. Milestones are very important because they, what they do for you and for people that are looking at your plan is they serve as a way for you to put a stake in the ground about when you're going to be taking risk out of your business. You have a risk that you'll never get a first customer, right? That's a risk. As you start your business and you think, am I going to do this business? You might consider, is anyone ever going to come through the door? Right? So that first customer, serving that first customer, them smiling and giving you the money, them being happy and saying so long, that was a great experience, whatever it is you're doing, that takes risk out of your business. You, you thought you might be able to get a first customer, but you weren't sure. Now you've satisfied a customer. That's the sort of thing that a milestone is. It, it's something that you want to have happen, and if it happens successfully, your business is on the way. It is less risky since you've accomplished that than it would have been beforehand. 
So what you want to set them up is something that's objective, observable, it's well defined, you measure it, you know when it's happened. So it's, you don't just say, we, um, we ha open our doors, right? That's not necessarily a clearly discrete time frame. You want something that people say, uh, yes, indeed, the store is open, you've had a successful day, you've had multiple customers, whatever. And it should be something that you can say, yes, indeed, it's achieved, or no, indeed, it has not been achieved. As I mentioned, each of these milestones need to take risk out of the business. And by the way, your complete set of milestones, all of the milestones you list, if they're all achieved, they should take all of the risk out of the business. So once you did milestone A, milestone B, milestone C, all the way down to the end of your milestones, once you've accomplished all of those, you have a successful business. So you want it to come do the complete picture. You don't just have a milestone on the easy things. Like you're not completely sure you can design a product that works, right? But you know you can hire people and open the doors of the location and you know that you could uh, place ads in the newspaper and all that, but you don't know if you can make a product. If you don't have a milestone for getting your product together, you may accomplish all the other milestones and never have a business, right? Because you've never really actually done the hard thing. So you need a milestone for everything. And that includes eliminating technology risk, that is, you can make something work, market risk, people will buy it and they'll buy it at the right price, operating risk, meaning that you can do it effectively at cost, you're making a product that you thought would cost you a dollar to make it and you can indeed make it for 98 cents, that's operating costs, legal, you're doing everything above board, you're taking out the legal risk, you formed your, the, the right prospects, the, or the, right, uh, the right paperwork and you followed all the right regulations, so you've taken out some of the legal risk you might have. You have your liability insurance, all those things. Financial risk, you've gotten your cash flow so that you can pay for your ongoing operations. And strategic risk, somebody opened a shop just like yours down the street and you've managed to survive the fact that they have, they're offering similar products. Your products are distinguished. You've maybe relaunch a few things. You maybe make some adjustments in your pricing. They've been there six months now, and you are just as prosperous as you ever were. In fact, you're taking some of their customers. That's another um, example of a milestone where you've achieved something. So that's what you do. And keep what's, in, what's important to remember is every time you eliminate risk from the business by reaching a milestone, you are actually increasing the value of your business. Because when investors or partners or whatever or your employees look at your business and they see all this risk, they discount the value because of the risk. But once you've taken the risk out and you have customers, you have a product, you're successful, you've fought off competitors, there's less risk in your business and your value goes up. So it's really how you create value by eliminating risk. And you do that by clarifying the milestones across all of your risk. And then one by one, you check them off and take that risk out of your business. On our next lecture, we'll talk about the management section of the business plan, the organization, capital structure, capitalization and structure, those kinds of things. Um, and, and those are other areas that need to be in the business plan. We won't spend a lot of time on that lecture. But we will see you and go through that part of the business plan in our next lecture. See you there.